Hey everybody, James Jaeger. I'm here at the world famous Gunside Academy, and uh, I got uh, OG uh, Andy Stanford here. That's been around. You you kind of were at the beginning of all this stuff. Not the very beginning, but uh, uh, I was in on the tail end of the good old days. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I started shooting when I was 15 years old, uh, 1977, and the Southwest Pistol League founded by Jeff Cooper who obviously founded Gunsight as well. In fact, that's right around when he founded Gunsight was, mm -hmm. was 77. Mm -hmm. And within a couple of, couple of uh, years it had gone to hell in a handbasket. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, he's taking 250, I'm taking 250 now and there's a 20 year spread between them and we wanted to talk about, and we haven't talked about it yet, uh, about the uh, maybe the contrast and compare the, the, the two classes. Yeah, actually almost a 30-year spread because I took it in 91. Okay. And it's, uh, 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 hey, you got to have this joke. New, new Guy walks in a bar in New Orleans, says, I'll have two hurricanes and a corona, and the bartender says, that'll be 2020. <laughs> so, <laughs> so here we are, 2020. Uh, like I said, I actually could have taken Gunsight to, I could have come to Gunsight in 78, mm -hmm. but it, it, long story I won't go into, but it fell through, but it was actually better that I took it when I was older. Uh, and because for one thing I had, uh, that was when I was starting to teach and I already had done all the drills I knew how to shoot so I could concentrate on how they taught. Right. So I, I took uh, 250 in April of 1991. We had, I think, maybe three instructors and one apprentice. The lead instructor was Bill Jeans, who's, who's an A-list instructor in his own right. Yeah. And the only other guy I remember is Chuck Miller, who uh, was an ex-Navy SEAL that went to work for Glock later. And when I went through the fun house the first time on Thursday I went and I've been doing this for 14 years and I was so jacked up that I spun around scraped a gouge in the plywood with my front sight and and swept my instructor and I thought that's it that kicked me out and I saw him years later I go you don't remember me but I pointed a four, loaded 45 at you in the fun house at gun site I bet he said I remembered you I don't know <laughs> but uh, uh, anyway the, the 250 class at that time, Jeff Cooper, he stayed. He actually had to leave on Wednesday. So we got a videotaped mindset lecture just like you did. Um, later on, I took the, the shotgun class. I got to actually watch it in person. But uh, uh, here's a Jeff Cooper, Jeff Cooper story from 1991. It was picture day on Wednesday, so I wore my fight racism t-shirt. And Cooper's given the mindset lecture and he goes, just because you're alert doesn't mean you're paranoid. Paranoia is one of these words like racism used by ignorant people. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, so uh, we showed up, me and my buddy Greg Showman, <clears throat> who is legally blind, which is another story. But uh, we were camping right over there is where the old campground was. And the first thing that happened was up comes this three-wheeler with Mrs. Cooper and a tray of brownies. So, <laughs> so that was our Sunday night welcome to Gunsight, which, by the way, had the best damn coffee. This guy, Avery Pollard, who is an Air Force veteran, he was a handyman around here. He made the coffee, and that, that shit was good. And the only place that equaled it was... At Ash Fork, 30 miles north, is play. I guess that's north. Uh, is a place used to be Ted's Bullpen Truck Stop, but they're out of business. But the sign's still there. Anyway, we got in there, had some of that good gunsight coffee. We were welcomed uh, by Cooper and everybody else. Or I guess we were welcomed by somebody else, and then Cooper came. And at the time, he wasn't spry, and he was kind of shuffling. And honestly, I mean, the reason I was there is I thought, well, this guy ain't going to be around forever. And I guess I wasn't the only one. But uh, so 
you know, Cooper welcomes us, give us, give us the, the um, you know, give us a safety lecture, whatever. We had a big class, 48 people. They divided us into two classes. As I recall, there were actually four Navy SEALs in the class, but they went in the other class. And we had some cops and a bunch of private citizens. And I may have been, this 1911 here that I'm wearing, this may have been the one that I was shooting there. Not that the gear matters so much, but I had a Bianchi Askins Avenger holster. And uh, so we went out and I was, I was very, very impressed with just the, this is the first class I'd ever taken, was Gunsight 250 in 91. And I guess I was just very impressed with the organization of it all and the, the program of instruction. I, I didn't have really any arguments with. Luckily at the time I was shooting Weaver, that's a, a few years before I found out that, that I wanted to shoot isosceles, but that was good that I was shooting Weaver because I got, I got my expert certificate here. I brought this to show James. This is actually typewritten onto the certificate. And the ones I got later in the rifle and shotgun class, they were printed on a computer in, in the very next year. But uh, uh, anyway, very nice weather. I love this setting. I think it's just, it's, it's a, and you can tell me how, how it was for you. I found it a fairly leisurely pace yeah. of, of a class. You're not being pushed, 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 pushed. So since I had already done pretty much everything they'd done here, uh, uh, with the exception of the shoot houses, which, like I said, uh, got me so jacked up, I, I uh, went to pieces a little bit on that deal. But, but really, just kind of like a shooting vacation, I would, I would describe the experience. Because it's just, it's gorgeous out here uh, with the, the junipers and, and, uh, and everything. And uh, anyway, so yeah, the, the, um, we, we did mostly building up our skills, draw stroke, aiming obviously started close, moved back, learned eventually probably the next day or so reloading the pistol. Um, and then on, it was either, I think it may have been, the night shoot may have been Wednesday night at that time. It's Thursday today. Jaeger's got the night shoot tonight. So I, I don't remember, but I think it was Wednesday night because every time I came to Gunsight on Thursday night, I drive into Flagstaff, which is about an hour and 15 away and have dinner. And that's 1991 is when I thought I, I want to move to Flagstaff. And lo and behold, about three years ago, I did. So so it was coming here and going to dinner on that Thursday night that had me want to want to go there. But anyway, they had a night shoot Wednesday night, and then Thursday we did a run on the outdoor simulator, probably the the Donga or the mm -hmm. or the Flay, and they had two shoot houses at the time, the Fun House and the Play House. We did the one on Thursday, and then we did two runs, one on the indoor, one on the outdoor on Friday. And back then, 250 was five and a half days. And on Saturday morning, you'd shoot the, the graduation exercises or school drills or whatever they call them. And I called Dave Hartman today to ask him, hey, what's the difference between that and what we did? And the one thing for sure is that back then, they had a string at 25 yards so, and you go prone for that. It was two shots in seven seconds, if I recall correctly. And so, so we used to shoot from long distance, Jaeger, <laughs> not like you whippersnappers. Yeah. But, uh, uh, and I think there was also a two reload two string that they don't do now in those drills. Uh, we did El Presidente, and I was mentioning, I was glad I shot Weaver. We had a guy in there that, that he was going along and he wanted to get an expert certificate, but, but he started shooting isosceles when the going got tough 
because he knew better, which turns out he was right. But they didn't give him an expert certificate because he was shooting isosceles. And the last I saw him is he was tearing off Matt as a wet hen in his rental car, kicking up a, a dust cloud down the, you know, doing 75 on the 15 mile an hour road. But uh, Cooper left, I said, on, on, I think it was Wednesday morning. And the other thing besides not getting the mindset lecture from him was if you shot a perfect score on the, on the graduation exercises on Saturday, he'd want to get his picture with you shaking his hand in front of your target. And I shot a perfect score, but I didn't get that picture. And then the other thing was, is if you won the man against man shoot off, he would sign the ladder, the, the competition ladder paper and give it to you. And I won my shoot off, but I didn't get that either. So uh, they would give you, if you won the shoot off, they'd give you a certificate for a Milt Spark Summer Special, which is this inside the pants holster, which I already had one. So I said, hey, will you give me the, the equivalent credit towards another Milt Spark holster, which they did. So I got this uh, Milt Sparks Roadrunner that was designed by Tony Cannelly, the guy who took over from Milt. And, uh, uh, they don't make it no more, and it's a pretty cool holster. So I wrote, I wrote on the back where it came from, because because if if I die before you do, Jaeger, you have to hold the an Andy Palooza <laughs> and, at, at tactical response and auction off all my shit for my heirs. <laughs> all, right. all right, you got it. He's on, on film here. So uh, yeah, so I I came to Gunsight three times. I did the 250 and 91. And then back to back, uh, a month apart, I did the shotgun class and the rifle class, because that was when I started out training. And I'd never been a cop, and I'd never been in the military. I was like, I need some kind of resume. And I figured if I could get an expert certificate in rifle, pistol, and shotgun from gun sight, that would be a, a good cornerstone. But it turned out I did get that, but nobody gave a shit. So, well, so you were the first three weapon master. Yep, me. I got, but Nash Piazza, he beat me by one because <laughs> he did the sub gun with Chucky Boy. And uh, so I guess I'll have to wash his feet or whatever they do these days. Uh, uh, so, all right. So, what about the, the new 250? You're in the, the, almost at the end of day four. Well, so, you know, I, you kind of started out, um, you took 250 kind of towards the beginning of your... Oh, yeah. And I'm taking it towards the end of my teaching yeah, career. Yeah, that's interesting. And, um, but uh, same thing, a warm welcome by the staff uh, when I got here, when everybody got here, and the safety brief, and, you know, the, hey, you know, watch out, there's rattlesnakes here, and, and, you know, all that kind of stuff, and everybody's very accommodating, and, uh, and uh, I just, I mean, it's a, it's a... You can tell they've been doing this a while. So it's a well-oiled machine, um, as far as uh, you know the signing. In, I'm sorry, signing in and all the other stuff that goes along there. And uh, so they said to, to bring a thousand rounds. And so you know, I've been to a bunch of classes, and you know that were like Rogers. You know, you shoot 500 a day at least. You know, things like that. So you know, so part of me was thinking. What are we gonna do? You know, five days and a thousand rounds. Well, it turns out we, we've done a lot, and uh, so I was. Uh, and I think also people are shooting a lot. Uh, we might have shot more than a thousand rounds already, uh, but um, but uh, the drills are uh, well thought out. They uh, make they make sense. Uh, they are building block process, and uh, they and they certainly, um, I believe, they hold true to. Cooper's intent, and uh, from what I from what I know from reading his books and seeing the videos and, and all that stuff, they are not hard weaver anymore. They really didn't really talk much about anything. They mentioned weaver, but they pretty much said, "Hey, most everybody that comes here shoots isosceles in nine millimeter out of a plastic gun." That's that's over ninety percent of the the folks that show up. So when I showed up with these cab at 1911s i was kind of a kind of a weirdo in the class and and when the instructor said why 1911 because he said i know you're a glock guy i'm like 
I came here to shoot Weaver and shoot a 1911 from my, from the people that you know probably could teach that the best. And so and, and so no no hard feelings. I'm, I'm not getting I'm not getting the Weaver stuff, uh, but I am running the shit out of these 1911s and, and all that stuff, and it's good. The instructors are good. Paul's the lead instructor. He's a, a former cop, really personable guy, good sense of humor, you know, and all that stuff. And uh, uh, but uh, Joe's another uh, a former cop that's teaching. He's he's great, uh, and it's Avila. It looks like Avila, if right. you. <laughs> uh, Avila. Uh, but uh, but uh, it's, but it's great, and uh, we just uh, we've been shooting. We we did a a run in the shoot house today, the fun house or whatever, and we did a a, a shoot on the the donga or whatever the out, outdoor uh, thing. And uh, we, we did some other stuff, dozier drill and stuff like that. But um, it seems to be moving efficiently. Every, all the students seem to be engaged. There was a guy, there was an amazing uh, guy shooting to my right who um, hadn't shot a gun since 1964 in the Boy Scouts and cleaned the dozer drill just a little while ago. And he, he's an older guy, you know, so. And, and cleaned the dozer drill a little while ago. I'm just like... It's amazing, you know. Uh, but uh, but uh, no, having fun, you know. Good good uh, uh, good attitudes all around, students and staff, and um, you know. And, and so, uh, you know, if you want, here's the thing. Like I already knew that gun sight was scored away, and they did good stuff. But if somebody shows up at my class and they say, "Hey, I've been through gun sight 250," and so I'm I know. I'll instantly know what's up. Like they can get their gun out safely, load it, and all that stuff. Line the sides up, press trigger, hit the target. So, uh, so I know more about what to expect from those gun sight students. Uh, and I also know to probably hold them to a bit higher standard, you know, because they they have been here. Uh, but um, night shoot tonight. Uh, then uh, tomorrow, uh, some some final stuff, another shootout run and out, out, outside run and uh, that's pretty much it have you done a man against man of that's, any sort that's friday okay so you have not done one yet right they're saving it to the end cooper thought that by the way that the competition match was just the preliminary to see the ladder for the man against man and cooper actually thought the man against man was was actually what should determine the winner of a shooting match. Mm -hmm. So that was a big deal to him, and that's why it was the last thing. Um, I had another question for you. Um, I probably remember, but I, what he said, I just realized, is I found it a very logical progression of instruction. Have you, does that mm -hmm. seem to you? Yep. Mm -hmm. and, and because... Like I said, for me, it was kind of a leisurely pace. Probably if you're a beginner, maybe it don't seem so leisurely. Mm -hmm. But it, it, because it was at that pace, I believe that pace is, is on purpose to kind of catch the majority of people and not leave people behind. Um, this is, I forgot to mention, this. Jeff Cooper said three things to me personally, only three in my entire life. Now, I have six letters from him, but, but I, here in the 250 class, when I was standing on, on the firing line, and their, their command used to be, plant your feet and make ready. And so I loaded up, and, uh, and I bent my knees very slightly, and Cooper walked behind me and said, quit crouching. So that's one of the things he said to me. When I took the rifle class, I took it with an M1 Garand, and that's how John Garand pronounced his name, is Garand. So people say, nice Garand, and I say, well, actually, he pronounced his name Garand. And at one point, Cooper says, you keep saying that. Are you trying to make some kind of point? And I wanted to say only that that's how he pronounces his name, Colonel Co-Oper, C-O-O-P, Co-Op, but I wanted my expert certificate, so I didn't say that. <laughs> And the third thing was I showed up, and this was not when, it, when I was in class. I would come by here on occasion when I was in the neighborhood. And it was after the Rich G years, and Cooper was back at Gunsight, and they would have these classes that had a C after the name, and that was where Cooper gave the lectures. So one of those classes, 
The class files out of the classroom, goes down to the range. He was even slower then. Comes out, gets on his trike, and I say, excuse me, Colonel, I, I just wanted to play this for you. And I had my accordion with me, and I gave him a command performance of the Gringo Pistolero. Now there's two main kinds of people, people that listen to the lyrics and people that watch the buttons to see what's going on. And unsurprisingly, Cooper was a button watcher. And I got done and Jeff Cooper said, you should come down to the range and play that for the students. But he wasn't the owner, so I didn't. I probably regret that, but, but uh, just, just know Jeff Cooper gives a gringo pistol <laughs> two thumbs up. That's fantastic. So anyway, I, I, this place is Mecca. Jeff Cooper's the greatest farms instructor that ever lived, and no one will take that away from him because everything we done, my whole career, James' whole career, we would not have had it without Jeff Cooper. And uh, uh, I've told James this, but I don't know that I've said it on tape. I think... James is the Jeff Cooper of the 21st century because he's using the available media. Jeff Cooper wrote for gun magazines. That's how he got the word out. Jaeger, an early pioneer on the internet. And plus, they both would say whatever the hell they want and didn't care who they pissed off. <laughs> so, so that's, you know. Uh, and James, I got to hand it to him. Coming here, like he said, this is late in his thing. I do not know of very many farms instructors who go and take classes from other instructors to learn, and, and James is certainly uh, one of that. I could probably count them on one hand and have fingers left over. So I, I believe coming here is kind of a pilgrimage. I don't know how yeah, you feel. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and any any structured practice that you did not make up is not going to do you any harm. <clears throat> right. And it's just beautiful here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. And, and uh, you know, I, I wish I'd come sooner. We can, we can talk about it, but I was a working cop back in the day and all that stuff. And so, you know, it just, it works out that it's now, but I, I think it's, I think it's just as uh, meaningful now as it ever would have been. It's got... I get all misty here. It's got a magic to it, yeah. I think. Yeah, absolutely. Just, just walking the same ground. Yeah. No, this is, I, I, I've said this more than once, and I believe other people have too. Uh, this is Camelot for the firearms training industry. This, this is the place. This is the kingdom. This is the, the magic. It, it really is. Like, there, that's, that's no exaggeration. I, and I guarantee you, you're not the only person that feels that way. You know, it's fantastic. Fantastic. What else? That's that's about it. Well, man, uh, I didn't know what, we were, what what you were going to say or exactly what we were going to talk about, but uh, that's fantastic. One of the the first pictures of Andy that I ever saw that made me go wow was a picture of little Andy beside Big Cooper, and you're 14 or 15 years old, uh, yeah. you know, and and I see this guy, this picture of Cooper from. Whatever year that 1978, was. 1978, Ipsic Nationals. 1978, and I go, wow, you know, I mean, like, dude, you've been in this a long time, and uh, so, so to, to get the history and stuff from you is it's fantastic. And, and listen, he can go on and on about this guy and that guy and the other guy and, and how these pieces fit together. But uh, you know, anytime we have conversations like this, it always makes me miss Gomez because oh, yeah. he was a historian. He was, and I I feel that I have had to take pick up the that mantle. I had to pick that up and I didn't particularly want to right and and I'm gonna throw my hat over the fence here I am gonna make a video documentary of the history of all of this so there hold I said him to it. it hold him to it yep that is that is as long as I'm breathing I, I will work on that till I get it done because some of these people are still alive Thel Reed one of the original combat masters is down in Bullhead City at Laughlin like an hour away from here Eldon Carl, another so, one. Of the so when are you doing the first one? Huh? I'm gonna within this month. Okay. Within a month, and 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 Jaeger will hit me with a sock full of horse manure <laughs> if I don't do it. Uh, but, so. But no, I, I, wonderful. Please do that. I, I mean, no, it's, it needs to be done. Yeah, absolutely. It needs to be done. And uh, but uh, wow, 
But anyway, seriously, thanks. Uh, he also bought me brought me a chicken burrito from one of the Bear Toes, which is awesome. <laughs> Bear Toes is a, a, a sketchy cartel de comida <laughs> across Southern California and Arizona. So, you Guys, uh, Andy Stanford and Jim Jagger with that response reminding you that your responsibility to be ready for the fight never ends. Thanks and go ahead. remember... Your number one option for personal security is, is a, a commitment to commitment to, to avoidance, avoidance, deterrence, and de-escalation. De yep. <laughs>